Today on Florida Sportsman Best Boat. If you're looking for a boat that can carry the whole family and has plenty of rigidity, we'll be taking a look at the Carolina Skiff 19 SWS, a bay boat with an overall length of 19 feet, a beam of 7 feet 9 inches, and max horsepower rating of 115. Standout features on the Carolina Skiff 19 SWS. Casting platforms at both the bow and stern give fishermen plenty of space to fish and also provide plenty of storage underneath. When live bait fishing, multiple live wells give anglers the ability to store more bait and access it without constantly walking back and forth. If you wish to take plenty of friends and family out on the boat, you'll appreciate a large carrying capacity, giving you the ability to take multiple passengers at one time. For the offshore fishermen ready to bring their game inshore, yet requiring plenty of amenities for the family, we'll be looking at the Creval 26 Open, a bay boat with an overall length of 25 feet 6 inches, a beam of 8 feet 6 inches, and max horsepower rating of 350. Standout features on the Creval 26 Open. Forward seating in the form of a coffin box provides a comfortable place for passengers to sit while also creating plenty of storage space underneath. An upper station is beneficial when it comes to both fishing and operation of the boat by giving a boater the extra height to see fish as well as any navigational markers or obstacles. When talking about fishability, a large casting deck in the stern provides a perfect place to cast and fish from, while at the same time concealing live wells and seating underneath. If your heart is offshore and you want to feel secure when venturing way out, we'll be taking a look at the Dusky 33, a center console with an overall length of 33 feet, a beam of 10 feet 10 inches, and max horsepower rating of 900. Standout features on the Dusky 33, when heading offshore for a long day of fishing, an oversized live well allows anglers to take plenty of bait to last throughout the day. Built to keep anglers safe in rough conditions, as well as keeping passengers dry while running, high gunnels are a must for a boat that lives in the blue water. After catching your fair share of fish, you're going to need a good place to put them. Large, refrigerated fish boxes offer plenty of space for even the largest catch, while keeping cold at the same time. Join our hosts George Labonte and Rick Riles as they conduct walkthroughs and review key features, all to help you decide if this is the best boat for you. Welcome to this week's edition of Florida Sportsman Best Boat. I'm Rick Riles. And I'm George Labonte. This week we're going to look at three very cool boats. We start out with the Carolina Skiff 19 SWS. Next, the Creval 26 Open. And finally, the Dusky 33. George, starting with that Carolina Skiff. They've been around a long time, been building great boats. What a great way to get your whole family and some of your friends out on the water. Absolutely, Rick. This is a boat made to take lots of people and lots of gear. If you've got to carry cargo on a boat and you're not overly concerned with having tons of bells and whistles, this might be a boat for you. And it can literally do so many things. And you know, speaking of doing so many things, moving into that Creval 26. Now that one's really starting to blur the line between bay boats and offshore boats. You know, you and I have seen bay boats get bigger and a little more sea capable. Now we're starting to see boats come the other way. That Creval 26 is almost an offshore boat that'll also handle the bay. But who doesn't dream of almost unlimited offshore range that you get out of that 33 Dusky? Yeah, Dusky's been around for a long time and this boat is an absolute beast of an offshore boat. I mean, they've come a long way in the 50 years they've been in business. They've really learned a thing or two about building a blue water boat. Let me tell you, to find the kind of weather that that 33 Dusky can't handle, you might want to turn on Deadlands Catch. Yeah, I don't think I'm ready for that weather, Rick. Well, we've got a lot to cover today, Rick. Let's get rolling. When we come back, host George Labonte and Rick Riles take a closer look at a boat made to be used by everyone in the family, the Carolina Skiff 19 SWS. This segment brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Yamaha's next-generation V6 four-strokes are changing the game. Mid-range power was awesome. Fuel, the burn, it's unbelievable. Couldn't believe the speed and the fuel economy is pretty impressive. I mean, I couldn't believe the power. It was like a... just... I was more like doing a quarter mile on a drag strip. And them things are like, it's a whole other game. So I made the switch. Experience the difference for yourself during the Yamaha Discover V6 Offshore Demo Tour. See why we call it the Game Changer. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts George Labonte and Rick Riles as they take a closer look at the Carolina Skiff 19 SWS. 
representing the 17 to 24 foot class in the bay boat category. The Carolina Skiff 19 SWS has an overall length of 19 feet, a beam of 7 feet 9 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 115. Designed to be durable yet versatile, she has a draft of 3 inches, a dry weight of 1,590 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 30 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles. George, there are certain brands that become iconic with certain types of boats. Let's talk about how that brand became iconic with skiffs. What yeah. is it that makes a Carolina skiff? There's a lot to love here. I mean, they've got features that are great for a certain type of boater wants a boat like this. A guy that is going to beat his boat up with his kids on the thing all weekend and go out and run it up on the sandbar and have eight or ten kids stomping around and throwing cast nets and shaking them out on the deck. This is a perfect boat for that guy. Okay, follow me for just a minute. You've got a household full of boat drivers. Maybe your wife's going to take it. Maybe the older kids are going to take it. This boat's going to be used a bunch, which means it may bounce off a dock every now and then. It's definitely going to bounce off a dock if you got that many people using it. And these boats take that kind of abuse well. These boats have been around forever. I mean, these are boats that are made to be beat on. It's a family boat, but it's a work boat too. I mean, look at this boat right here, loaded to the top with crab pots. I mean, that guy knows he needs a boat that's going to get banged up. You take the family out on this version of the boat, it's just as indestructible. George, when you go from a, just a hull to a liner boat, boy, do you gain a lot of advantages. Having the platforms front and rear are a big one. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a casting deck here and there, big plus, but you've got the storage underneath that area too. I mean, you've got two fish boxes on this boat in the front, you got a live well in the front, and you got anchor storage. I mean, plus a place to fish from too. We've become big fans of stern and aft live wells instead of side by side because going all the way to the back to get another live shrimp is kind of a pain in the neck. Rick, not only that, having the two live wells, you can put pedestal seats in the front and the back of this boat and two people can fish and have their own bay well too at the same time. Now Rick, a lot of people think of skiffs like this, they think of kind of a Spartan boat, but this boat's got some trim features on it. Well, starting with the console, you know what I love? Switches that are up here. Think about kids running back and forth. They're always kicking on a bilge pump, shutting off a motor, yeah. all kind of stuff. This is where they ought to be, and they're all labeled so you know exactly what you're turning on. Absolutely right. And if you got a bunch of kids on the boat, first thing mom is going to want is sunscreen on everybody. You got a T top here, nice fabricated top. You got some rod storage up on top there. Got an electronics box right here. You can put your electronics up inside. But more importantly, you got shade to get out of the sun. I mean, get the kids out of the sun for a little bit. That's a nice feature, too. George, before we move to the transom, here's two more features that I don't want to miss. I love this backrest that you can run the boat by sitting here, flip it, and fish the boat. And boy, does this ever come in handy. I know you love them. Uh, you know I do because I trailer a lot. Yeah. So you just pop this windshield off, stick it in the console. It's not coated in love bugs when you get where you want to go. Exactly, Rick. Hey, let's take a walk to the back of the boat and check out this casting deck. Jump up here. Rear casting deck. Yeah, and this comes from having a linered boat. You couldn't do that the way they did it. It's not just a place to stand. Live wells, take me through it. Yeah, well listen, you know, it creates space. You've got your fuel tank located under here, but a hatch to get to the fuel tank. Batteries under there. You've got your second live well right here, but I want you to look at the finished work on this boat. Now we keep talking about commercial, recreational. You know, this boat's got recessed pop-up cleats all the way around here, the same thing with these hatch lifters, I mean, it's got finished work quality stuff on. I mean, it's really, it's not, it's just not a work boat. If you're the kind of family that wants a boat that doesn't require you to spend two days a month in the driveway waxing it, polishing it, you want a boat that gets you on the water and you want to spend more time on the water, the Carolina Skiff 19 SWS is a great boat that doesn't demand a lot from you. When we return, host George Labonte and Rick Riles step aboard a boat built for serious fishing, yet is loaded with features for the family. The Creval 26 Open. This segment brought to you by Evan Rood, the outboards that are changing everything. The future of boating is here. Now get all the efficient performance of an Evinrude E-Tech G2 in the new 150, 175, and 200 horsepower. Fuel economy is everything. I was really shocked how fuel efficient it is. Anywhere from 40 to 50 miles further on a tank of fuel. All day on the water. I told my wife, I said, you know, I can't think of the last time I filled up. It's more money in the bank for me. The best-in-class fuel economy of the Evan Rudy Tech G2 is now available from 150 to 300 horsepower. To learn more, visit evinrude.com. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. 
Join our host, George Labonte, as he meets with Clint Saunders to discuss the newest power option from Suzuki Marine in this week's power segment. I'm here today with Clint Saunders from Suzuki Marine. Clint, Outboard Motors, the technology is really moving ahead at like a breakneck speed here. There's a lot of exciting new things happening in motors. Suzuki Marine's kind of right there at the front of the pack with a really exciting new motor. Why don't you tell me about it? Well, it's our new 350A. Uh, Suzuki developed this engine with bigger, heavier center consoles in mind. Not only center consoles, but bay boats were going single engines, but they were getting bigger and bigger. Pontoon boats, there's a call and a need for a much larger engine. And Suzuki kept that in mind with the development of the new 350A. We've came out with a 4.4 liter block. It is a V6 block, normally aspirated, but we've got two injectors per cylinder. It will allow the boat to come on plane easier, it carries loads easier, and it increases fuel efficiency much better because you don't have near the slip with two propellers as you would with one. The other thing we've done is we've introduced our lean burn into our 350. And what that lean burn does is at your mid-range speeds, it really adjusts the engine through the computer, the valve train, and, and electronics to give you the most fuel efficient engine you can have. Well, Clint, I had a chance to run this new 350 for the last couple days, and let me tell you, I was impressed. Great fuel economy, just a really good performing motor. It's a very exciting time to be in the market for a new outboard. Join our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles, as they step aboard the Creval 26 Open. Representing the 25 to 28 foot class in the bay boat category, the Creval 26 Open has an overall length of 26 feet 6 inches, a beam of 8 feet 6 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 350. Built to fish both inshore and offshore, she has a draft of 12 inches, a dead rise of 16 degrees, a dry weight of 3,600 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 83 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles. George, good morning from the flybridge of the Creval 26 <laughs> Open. That is a flybridge. Woo, why are you down there? How about making me a sandwich and bring me what, a cold what, drink? What would you like? <laughs> I tell you what, this is a different kind of boat. Things are changing though, Rick. There's a lot of people that are offshore fishermen that want to bring their game inshore, and this boat fits that description perfectly. This boat has got a lot of wow factor. I mean, it's a trimmed out, custom looking boat. Why don't you climb on down out of there off your high horse and come down and we'll have okay, a look you're, around. Okay, you tell me I have to come down. You've right? got to come down. I'm on the way. All right. There's a whole lot to like and it starts right here. I love the height of the bow. The trolling motor is the deadliest weapon that we've seen in offshore fishing in a long time, and you can't use one if your bow's too high. Absolutely. Well, this bow is just the perfect height for me. Let's talk about this seat right here. This thing is the most comfortable seat. I mean, <laughs> if you haven't climbed in this thing, I want you to hop up in here and take a nap. It's unbelievable. A great use of the space. This box right here, I mean, you got a cooler underneath it with your bay tray that you've got to have. This thing does not get in your way at all. It's very easy to walk around. It's the perfect size, and I'm telling you, I have never sat in a more comfortable boat. Seat. And it doesn't take anything away from the boat. George, as we head back, I gotta show you this tower. That is not your average bay boat tower, I promise you. No, I've decided I've gotta have a tower now. After seeing a few tower boats this year, and this one especially, I gotta have one. Let me see this thing. Rick, this is one overbuilt top right here. Tell me how you liked it up there. I liked it, and the thing I like first about it, George, is the integrated steps. You don't even see them. It is so easy. The steps come up the side here. Talk about that electric sunroof, yeah, right? Yeah, Val has done something very clever with that. Putting an electric sunroof, it's just ingenious. You know what, a tower is really important for a boat like this, Rick. It's useful offshore and inshore. If you're running on the beach, I mean, whether you're cobia fishing, tarpon fishing, whatever you do out there, you can see it all from up there. It's really key as a fishing tool and a navigation tool. You've got a duplicate of everything up top there, incidentally. There's a seven inch repeater up on top. You've got controls for the power pole, all your switches up there. This hard top is not the only thing that's really impressive about it. What sits underneath it, this console is absolutely beautiful. How do you like the trim around your dual screens? I mean, that's just beautiful. And this isn't not thought out. This has everything you need to hold your stuff here, including a lip to keep it from falling back on you. There's a bunch of room to store stuff inside this console. You can put a porta potty down in there. There's room for that too. There's tons of storage, access to these systems. Back here, this helm station, super comfortable. Again, well thought out. You got, I mean, the standard arrangement there. You've got a nice cooler on the bottom under a sliding track, rod holders across the back. 
But these seats, this upholstery, super plush, very comfortable to drive from. If you want that bay boat characteristic in a boat, when we move to the back of the boat here, you're gonna see a beautiful casting deck. Let's take a look at this. Okay, Rick, you wanted a casting deck? You got it. I tell you what, you feel like you're back on a bay boat now. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, and this is very fishable. I mean, it feels really comfortable up here to me. You got two live wells back here. There's a live well in the front too, but you got two nice live wells back here, 28 gallons a piece. You've got your seating back here. That has to go somewhere. You take that, put that stuff underneath it, make a nice casting surface. It's very easy to walk around up here. I mean, it's just, this is, now you're in a bay boat. I've never seen that splash well arrangement and that double step before. This, everything washes right off of the back. I like the two steps, getting to the swim ladder makes it a little easier to climb in and out of the boat. So George, if your heart's offshore, but you want to come inshore, or if you're an inshore guy and you want to go offshore, I tell you what, that's Creval 26 open. It needs to be on your list. You need to see it for yourself. When we come back, hosts George Labonte and Rick Riles check out a proven boat built to comfortably operate in the offshore arena, the Dusky 33. This segment brought to you by Suzuki Marine, the ultimate four-stroke outboard. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles, as they check out the Dusky 33. Representing the 31 to 53 foot class in the center console category, the Dusky 33 has an overall length of 33 feet, a beam of 10 feet 10 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 900. Built for fishing offshore in even the roughest of conditions, she has a draft of 18 inches a variable dead rise of 20, 25, and 35 degrees, a dry weight of 6,700 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 260 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles. George, you and I have seen a lot of boat companies come and go. There's a lot of new ones. How about 1967, Ralph and Pat Brown started Dusky? Dusky has been right there at the front of the pack. They've even set trends in boating. I mean, this boat has got a lot of unique features on it that you're not gonna see on a Dusky that's 30 years old. This is a step bottom boat, Rick, which is great. I mean, there's a bunch of features on steps that are really attractive, but this boat goes beyond that, okay? You've got a variable dead rise. This boat starts at 50 degrees in the front, goes to 35, then to 25, then to 20 as you work your way back. The boat is a soft riding boat. It's just a really, really revolutionary design. Let's start right here in the cockpit, Rick. Look at the size of this cockpit. You know, this is a big, heavy boat made to tackle big, heavy weather, but I like the big break in the shear line and how low the freeboard is back here. If you're sailfish and you want to reach over and bill a sailfish, you can easily reach the water from right here. You're right, this will come to a, as a shock to our viewers, but I'm not very tall. <laughs> and I can reach a billfish from over the side of this boat, which is a big deal to me. One of the things that really jumps out again at me this live well right here, I like where it's located, but more importantly, this 100 gallon live well in the transom. Could you ever need more water than that to keep bay alive? You can't picture a cannon. You know what? They got it pumped right. You can completely black out that well with live baits, George, and it's got the pump systems to keep them going all day long. Tell me a little bit about the Dusky Drive, Rick. The Dusky Drive has been around a long time, and it's very simple and it gives you the solid transom to fish up against, okay? It improves the performance of the boat because your motors are further back. It's a solid, simple, time-proven technique for hanging your motors. Rick, continuing in the sport fish boat cockpit theme here, look at the size of the cockpit, but look at, you've got eight rod holders in the gunnel, and turn around and have a look at this. This is a huge tackle center helm station right here. You've got an additional eight rod holders right there, 16 rod holders back here. Once again, your math is off. You don't have 16, okay? You got 24. I forgot about that. Well, the big advantage that gives you, George, is you can change gears two or three times during the day. This basically is your work spot on the boat. Everything is within arm's reach. You need to get it, something, hooks, leaders, knives. It's all right there. You've got this seating right here. You love the mezzanine seating. It's one of the things that makes this boat more of a fishing machine. Yeah, and that's actually just back here. There's more rod holders forward. Actually, let's take a walk forward and look at the middle of the boat here. 
Rick, two things you learn to appreciate when you fish on boats down south where we are right now, okay? One, in the summertime, it's always hot. It's hot today. You really learn to appreciate a bunch of shade. This has got a great big T-top on it. You've got tons of shade under here. I'm glad we're standing under it. The second thing you learn to appreciate is being able to get out of the weather. This is a massive console. This three-sided enclosure is big enough for three people at the helm to get behind the weather. If there's gonna be a little bit of water coming over the front, and I'm talking about extreme weather, you can hide from it right here. Also, the size of this dash panel, two 16-inch displays right there, plenty of room for that. All your switching right there, your center helm operator, you're right there, everything's at your fingertips. I mean, it's an oversized console, reason for that. Inside of it is very roomy. I mean, you can get down inside there. You've got access to all your systems from the back. You could put so much gear down in there. I mean, you will not run out of places to put things on this boat. George, let me take you up front because let me tell you something I learned a long time ago. If I'm not dry running the boat, I'm not happy. As much as I love to be able to build a sailfish at the back of the boat, whoo, do I like a big high bow. I want to stay dry. Yeah, you definitely feel secure up here. I mean, this is right where you like it. I mean, this gunnel comes up to the right spot on you when you're standing here, you're inside the boat. You can actually climb up on top of it here and get up there and walk around and fish from up there. But when you're down here, you definitely feel safe. I'll give you another thing to like about up here, my boy. How about a refrigerated drink box and a fish box down here that's really special? Rick, special doesn't even begin to cover it. This fish box is not only huge, it's got three freezer plates in it and it's big enough Actually, the Brown family told me they put two swordfish in this box. If you didn't have enough storage space between inside the console and this great big fish box right here, this forward seating, these boxes right here are very spacious, or you can eliminate the forward seating altogether and just have a wide open deck up here. But here's the big deal. You're working with the builder. So if you want to work with a company that builds the boat the way you want it and walks you through the entire process and does the work themselves, you need to see the Dusky lineup, and in particular, the Dusky 33. George, that was a fun day on the water. Three wildly different boats, all with their own mission. They all did them well. Absolutely. If you'd like any more information about the boats you saw this week, or any of the boats you've seen on Florida Sportsman Best Boat, visit floridasportsman.com. And we'll see you next week on another edition of Florida Sportsman Best Boat. When filming for Florida Sportsman Best Boat, the cast and crew docked and dined at Pirate's Cove Marina in Stewart, Florida. Family owned and operated, featuring 50 renovated rooms with an outstanding restaurant and a full service 50 slip marina. Be sure to join us next week for another episode of Florida Sportsman Best Boat.